Ghostbusters, which hit theaters last night. And in it, a new lineup of joke-cracking women, including a physicist and an engineer, fight the same kinds of spirits the original crew battled 30 years ago. Can't believe it. I'll leave you to decide whether to to see it. I think I'm going to go see it. Meanwhile, in, in a movie where ghosts walk among us, real enough to battle with the help of a proton pack, where does the science come in? I got some pretty cool stuff cooking up over here if you want to just turn your head. I improved beam accuracy by adding a plasma shield to the RF discharge chamber. I have cryo cooler to reduce helium boil up. And to dub it all up, we got a freaking Faraday cage. Who doesn't have a Faraday cage these days? That was actress Kate McKinnon, who plays engineer uh, Jillian Holtzman. Uh, and she got help from one of our guests with that dialogue right down to the Faraday cage. And both my guests helped make sure the proton packs and the Ghostbusters lab were realistic visions of particle physics right down to the equations on the bulletin boards. Let me bring them on. Dr. James Maxwell, a staff scientist at the Department of Energy's Jefferson Lab, he helped design the proton packs used in the movie. And it, the movie has a replica of his own lab instrumentation. It was all part of the set. Welcome to Science Friday. Hi, Ira. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're welcome, Dr. L- Dr. Lindley Winslow, an assistant professor of physics at MIT. She made sure that all the equations you see were accurate and relevant to particle physics. Welcome to Science Friday, Dr. Winslow. Thank you. It's great to be here. i got to ask how you both got involved. Dr. Winslow, you first. How did you both get involved in this project? Um, so particle physics is a pretty small world. And so I spent two years at UCLA where I overlapped with David Salzberg, who's the science advisor for the Big Bang Theory. And so they went to him to say, who should we talk to in Boston? And they sent, uh, they sent props and set dressing to me and uh, tried to teach them what a particle physics lab should be like. And, and, and James? Yeah, so when they came to, to Lindley, she gave uh, them a, a tour of, of all the labs at the Lab for Nuclear Science. And, and one of the labs she showed them was my, my helium polarization lab. So they took a bunch of pictures and, and showed them to the director, Paul Feig, and he saw my lab and apparently pointed at it and said, give me that thing. And, and I guess I was in the background of these pictures. And I imagine he's pointing at me and saying, give me that nerd. So they, <laughs> they essentially just uh, asked me to replicate my lab for the, the, the set, yeah. And they did that with you, Lindley, also? Get some of your lab in there? The, uh, they, were, they needed to understand what the lab looked like. And what apparently they heard uh, from the director about my labs, he thought, well, those labs are gritty and dirty. That's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> so uh, they were used to more of like the acrylic and stainless steel that you often see in science fiction. Like, no, no, our, our labs are much more like Ghostbusters yeah. than uh, like Star Trek. Yeah, and, you know, more like the original Star uh, Ghostbusters, too. Um, now, y- your apparatus led you both down a rabbit hole to uh, giving even more assistance. James, tell us, how much did you end up doing? What was your help besides having well, your lab there? Yeah, well, so I guess having my lab there meant I had to, like, produce machine drawings for them and, and borrow some derelict equipment from uh, the MIT Bates Accelerator and, and stuff like that. But then, um, so if you if you watch the movie, you can actually see my the big copper hoops of, like, the Helmholtz coil magnets from my polarizer. Uh, but then when I was on the set, I actually got to chat with the actors, with Melissa McCarthy and Kristen Wiig and Kate McKinnon and, and explain what my experiment was and how it worked. Uh, and, and then after that, Paul Feig actually asked me to, to diagram all these props with realistic terminology. And, and since this hardware is really pretty central to the movie, it, it led to a, a lot of other little bits of consulting on the script and such. Do you actually have your own proton pack? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's like a prototype, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lindley, the scientists in the original Ghostbusters were, were psychologists. And you remember, I remember, you know, that little trick test that was being done there in, with the cards. But in this movie, we have a physicist, we have an engineer in the mix. Is it cool to see someone like yourself on the big screen? Yes. Um, so uh, Kristen Wiig's character is actually an assistant professor. She's supposed to be at Columbia. But I was very excited to see in one uh, uh, trailer she was wearing an MIT sweatshirt. So as you can imagine, I really relate to a, a woman assistant professor at this point. And so one of the scenes that you actually see in the trailers is, is her in front of this huge whiteboard uh, giving what I think is going to be her tenure talk. And um, that was my big account, uh, uh, contribution to it, is exactly what went up on that board and how exactly nervous she should be giving it. Our number, 844 <laughs> if you'd like to join our discussion, talking with uh, James Maxwell and Lindley Winslow 
uh, scientists who are consulting on the new Ghostbusters. Um, I, I also think it's kind of uh, kind of cool um, that uh, Lindley, you are a neutrino scientist, and aren't neutrinos kind the, the the ghosts, the ghost particles of physics? Actually, James and I were joking about this earlier. We were debating exactly what ghosts would be if they were real. And I'm like, obviously, they're neutrinos. They go through anything. But if you get them really mad, they blow up stars. And so uh, I think there's a good uh, comparison to the ghosts and Ghostbusters. Did, did, did they know that about that before they got you involved, that those were ghost particles? No, I think that's a good happenstance. But nature likes happenstances often. Mm -hmm. So this movie isn't The Martian. It isn't gravity, and yet you were you were a science consultant, James. How, how do you figure out where the real science fit into a story about fighting ghosts? Yeah, I guess it's it's a challenge. Um, the first thing I had to think about was to think critically. What what could ghosts actually be? I mean, so uh, Lindley says maybe they're neutrinos. To me, it's it's weird. It's somehow you know we think that the laws of physics apply everywhere all the time, but these ghosts clearly change these rules. They're not everywhere all the time. So what in Ghostbusters you call these manifestations of ghosts on the, our plane of existence or something, I saw as like an isolated physical phenomena in which there's like this significant coupling between standard model particles and this spectral other stuff. And so with this idea, I set out to try to uh, spec out all the props that they, they showed me and build kind of a cohesive framework of, of what is the science of ghost busting and, and how would you actually uh, attack these things. So did you make it believable? I mean, that science, for science to actually explain what a, how a ghost could appear? I mean, to a certain degree. I mean, they're ghosts, so maybe they're not real. But, uh, I, you know, it, it's uh, what I wanted to put in the packs were realistic components that if you, if you sat down with the schematics, uh, and, and you looked at them, you could go and look at every component I put on there, look it up on Wikipedia, and learn about some realistic yeah. tools that, that physicists use to uh, to study the universe. No dark energy or dark matter required here. For <laughs> well, it might be. Might be. Well, is there any point where you said, stop, I know you can't say cut, you know, you're not the director, say, wait a minute, you can't say that, that's just too far out scientifically. No, no, I don't think so. I mean, it's it's a comedy, right? So yeah. it's 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 just a lot of fun. So uh, it's 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 let them have their fun and then work in a little bit of um, legitimate science when you can. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about your proton pack a little bit. You do, you how do you re you redesign a proton pack from what was different from Danny Aykroyd's cyclotron, right? Isn't that what he had on his back, something like that? In the old yeah, movie? that's exactly right. It's uh, yeah. So you know, Paul Feig he sent me this schematic that a fan I think had made of the original proton pack. Um, and said, hey, can you, you know, can you remake one of these for us? Um, so I took the cyclotron idea and I tried to expand on it and tried to make it a little more legitimate, right? So maybe we're not going to use a cyclotron anymore. This is now we're going to use a synchrotron. Um, where do you get the protons? So you have to have some kind of proton source, maybe an electron, uh, cyclotron resonance like plasma source. You feed that into a miniature superconducting proton synchrotron and um, you have to tune the beam, steer the beam, uh, and, and put in a wand that you can then point at the ghosts. Do you, you still never cross the streams in this movie? Yeah, don't cross the streams. That's, that's critical. <laughs> <laughs> Lindley, you are responsible for the, for the equations we see in the film on a whiteboard in the physics uh, professor's university and then all over the Ghostbusters lab. How, how did you decide what needed to be there? So they were pretty tight with the script. I wasn't allowed to read the whole thing, obviously. But they gave me one line that she was trying to unify quantum mechanics and gravity, which is this great problem in physics now. Um, so I thought about that and what she would say up in front of you know, her colleagues. And so what I came up with is this theory, SU5, that you see up there, um, which is a theory that was disproved by an experiment called Supercomucande based on the life of the proton. And the background to this measurement was actually neutrinos. So I love this measurement. So I'm like, that's what she would put there. That would be the introduction to her, her, uh, her work as an assistant professor. Mm -hmm. And so that's what's behind her. No string theory or anything like that? There's a little string theory off in the corner. Um, but the running joke of everything on the boards is me. And then when I went on maternity leave, my colleague Janet Conrad took over. Is a little sort of uh, poking fun at string theorists <laughs> who haven't quite come up with something we can test yet. And so as an experimentalist, we like to keep uh, poking at that. Okay, so I'm a physicist. I'm going to see the movie. What am I gonna What am I gonna see on those equations? Um, so there's a there's there's a good Feynman diagram. There's <laughs> some uh, actual experimental limits from Super yeah. Conde, and then the actual derivation of the life of the proton um, in, within this theory, uh, and then. 
So this is where James is uh, one up on me. He actually seen the movie. I don't know how many of the lab boards actually got up there because there you see homages to my favorite experiments, including uh, my current uh, experiment, Quare, uh, which is searching for a rare process called double beta decay. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that yeah, made it up there, but there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned you mentioned uh, the science advisor to the Big Bang Theory. Did you ever go back to him and say, "Help! What should I put up on the board?" <gasps> Um, well, David actually had taken me to a filming of the Big Bang Theory once, so I got to see uh, how that worked, and I was like, okay, I've, I've, uh, I've gotten a little tutorial on, on what should go up there and, and how to make your friends happy by putting their experiments up there. And so so. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the set design was, was inspired, uh, Lindley, by a tour through your lab and other physics labs. Uh, what is a physics lab? What is the Hollywood version? Central casting, at what a physics lab supposed to look like? So I think it depends on which movie you're in. In some movies, there are these like pristine, lots of stainless steel and uh, acrylic, and everything is put away in their drawers. And in other movies, there's junk all over the place. Unfortunately, um, uh, the latter is more like what our labs were. In fact, I was just moving in. I had only been there at six months, and so my lab was really filled with junk, except for this beautiful corner that had James's stuff in it. Um, and so actually, they took two boxes of junk from my lab for me, and they... And instead of getting recycled, it went to the Ghostbusters set. So I thought that was pretty cool. My junk made it on camera. <laughs> of course, because it's a biology lab, uh, you know, if it were a biology lab, it would have to be pristine. Mm -hmm. But uh, if it's like one of those superheroes labs, let's just name who's the... Uh, I can't think of his name. Now I'm going to have a senior moment about... The, the, he had three movies where he was an inventor, you know, and he could fly around and his lab. Iron Man? Man. Iron Man. Now, <laughs> Iron Man had a, had a pretty junky lab, right? All kinds of stuff around there? Exactly. But I think that's a little closer to what they decided they needed here. But uh, even more so if you're working on a budget like they were at the, at the university that was being portrayed in Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. So they needed even more junk to build their experiments from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> James, were you, were you a big fan of the original Ghostbusters? Oh, absolutely. So, well, so I, was, I was two when Ghostbusters 1 came out. So I was a little young. But when Ghostbusters 2 came out, uh, I was seven. I can remember um, my parents talking to other, you know, parents in the neighborhood and wondering, you know, w with seven-year-olds, can we show them this PG-13 movie? But uh, once we saw the movie, my friends and I were totally in love. Um, my, my friends had all the little action figures and play sets and stuff, and so we, we played Ghostbusters on the playground for sure. <laughs> yeah, we did. Um, Ira Flato, this is Science Friday from PRI Public Radio International talking with uh, Dr. James Maxwell and Dr. Lindley Winslow, who are advisors to the new Ghostbusters movie. Um, were you a fan, Lindley, of the original? I was. I, I don't remember how many times I've watched this, and my sister had a stuffed Slimer that I was very jealous of. <laughs> so what's your take on let, Let's talk about the, the, the gender swap on this. What's your take? Uh, some people think it's kind of controversial on some corners of the Internet that the new cast is all women. So... so as a, as a woman in physics, uh, I, I was just in love as soon as they announced the reboot. And so when I got the email, I was like, of course I will sh take some time and show you around MIT. And I just don't think you can stress enough the importance of role models to show um, young girls like what is possible and then give permission for them to try things. Um, you know, you can solder, you can play with an oscilloscope and look up on the screen at these people doing that. And mm -hmm. I, I was just, I thought it was great. That's, Especially that they portrayed experimental physicists uh, as an experimental physicist. Yeah, you know, science is hot all over the film now on television, wherever they, from the Big Bang Theory to other movies to you know scientists being portrayed. This is a good time to be a scientist in film, is it not? I, I think so, and I'm very glad to see sort of a, a diverse representation of, of scientists in film and of all of the different amazing things that you can study in nature. All right, James, I know, uh, here's, without letting secrets out, I know that you've seen the film at mm -hmm. this point. Did, did, did it look like a movie that had consulted real scientists? Absolutely. I mean, uh, th this, I mean, it, even before um, Lindley and I came in to consult, um, you know, we got to step into these sets that were just so amazingly realistic. And, and like she said, it's, it's gritty and it's real um, because scientists are not necessarily clean people all the time. Um, but yeah, no, it, it felt like, uh, yeah, like totally legitimate uh, little science had, had leaked into this, um, you know, paranormal comedy somehow. <laughs> Did you both see the set when it was finished before they, while they were filming it or before? 
Yes, I think that was my uh, favorite part of this was going and seeing uh, seeing the lab that they had built, and you know wanting to go play with the, all of the toys that they had uh, well, had, had put onto set. That's my next question. Did it feel like you were home? You know that you felt comfortable. This is not a movie set. This is my lab. Yes, in fact, I think James and I got like a little too comfortable. We were waiting around for the actresses to come so we could meet them. And we're just sitting there talking about physics. And they're like, um, they're going to start rehearsing now. You need to move. We're like, oh, right. This is in our lab. That's, uh, <laughs> when I was on the set of The Big Bang Theory and they recreated the Science Friday set exactly like our studio, I get exactly how I felt. Wait a minute. I'm not, this is my spot. You're not going to kick me out of this. you know? <laughs> so where do you go from here? Have you been bitten by the movie bug? Can you... So I think we were both hoping for uh, Ghostbusters uh, four. Would that be? Did I get the number right? Sure. <laughs> a, a yeah, sequel to four the through seven. I'm 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 rooting for it. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Thank, and we hope you get that. Well, we're going to look forward to the movie. Dr. Lindley Winslow, assistant professor of physics at MIT. James Maxwell, staff scientist, Department of Energy, at Jefferson Lab. Thank you all for joining us today.